let's assume that um, you are X++ developer uh, who is making maybe like initial steps uh, and um, you would like to um, address um, the uh, customer record and you would like to see the customer name um, has access have access to customer name customer address um, in your X++ customization so apparently um, all this available in the data entity which is customer version 3 for example or other associated with the customer record here you see the um, address um, which is street, city, county, whatever uh, and then you see the um, customer account and you see the uh, organization name and search name which might be different okay but this is data entity so you would like to uh, actually work on the table level and um, you need the script uh, which would uh, link uh, tables and give you the name and the address let's uh, take a look at the script right so this is the script uh, so you have to link the three tables cast table is uh, apparently customer table which has customer ID account number is this in in it however the um, in dynamics 365 uh, in comparison to older one for example um, dynamics 2009 it is further formalized and uh, the customer name and customer address is not available through the uh, cast table anymore so it's uh, the um, let's take a look so customer name uh, actually in in this table dear party table um, and uh, apparently um, uh, this table uh, has the names for other objects as well so if you need um, addition if you need the name for something else uh, you can review this query and uh, just modify it probably replacing this table and, and uh, the uh, modifying this initial link okay so now the address uh, it's uh, in logistics postal address table okay and here's the link for you which is from the um, dear party table to um, to this logistics postal address table right now here we also providing you with these two fields so probably it's uh, not really difficult to guess why do we need this um, imagine um, the customer moved and um, now uh, valid from and valid to are in the, in the history so but if you ignore these fields uh, you would get a duplicate in your uh, uh, X++ customization uh, and you would not notice it immediately uh, but uh, down the road uh, it would be annoying and difficult to debug so avoid this from the beginning here is the second script uh, which gives you the um, selection of the uh, um, current address right so I just use the uh, get date which gives you uh, exact current date but in your case uh, you may consider like whatever different date if you like so or like if you are looking into uh, historical um, addresses uh, in for example your uh, SSRS report embedded in um, Dynamics 365 interface then you may get uh, the address um, which was current when let's say sales order was um, uh, created or processed I guess um, this information is useful um, if uh, for example uh, you are um, um, doing something like um, downloading your database from the web um, and, and copying locally uh, through SSIS or 
if you are doing the database copy uh, on uh, the Azure and then you use um, the copy of your production table which could be uh, addressed directly via SQL uh, and uh, you are using something like a Power BI or SSRS um, and uh, you are using um, SQL queries for creating Power BI reports which is kind of nice and very flexible are uh, probably more um, flexible compared to O data um, again O data you can address um, in your Power BI report or Excel or um, SSRS I don't really know uh, didn't do this uh, you can address your um, direct uh, production um, that database so see my previous video if you would like to know how to um, uh, pull data into Power BI custom report uh, from your production database uh, on the web in Azure uh, via OData. This is uh, pretty much the only way uh, which you could address. Uh, at least uh, that's uh, the way I know. Okay, now um, let's take a look at this Excel data entity and, th and think about the um, uh, multiple addresses. Uh, some of them are, one, one of them is current and others, let's say, expired. Uh, let's see what we get. We are getting from this uh, customer version three data entity, uh, and um, which customer has uh, like a duplicate address. So let's go back to the uh, our SQL, uh, and uh, this is the um, query which is supposed to give you the um, customers w with um, several addresses. Uh, so. Uh, in my case, I had to, I have to uh, uh, appeal to this field, the uh, data area ID, and just make it USMF, which is the most rep representative uh, company in uh, the Contoso demo environment. Uh, in the case of X++, you are working in the scope of the company, so you can disregard this, though. So if I run this query, uh, you see that this guy, US002, has two addresses. Uh, let's, let's check it out. So here is the query for you. We are just uh, addressing this uh, US002 in USMF. Uh, let's take a look at the addresses they got. Okay, so they got um, the current address. You see it uh, from um, um, uh, March 1st, uh, 2009, and uh, to whatever, and, uh, to some really a long, long, long time in the future. Uh, and uh, you see the address which is expired, this is the first line, so this is just uh, like this, okay, so and this is expired on Mar March 1st, 2009. So let's take a look at what um, uh, data entity gives you. Let, let's assume you have um, sales order for these customers from, um, let's say, uh, which are earlier than this date, like hypothetical um, date. Uh, March 1st, 2009. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, customer data entity. Okay, customer data entity gives you just one record for this customer apparently and it gives you the current address. So meaning that um, if say you are using this data entity for your reports uh, you for and uh, your uh, reports are including include uh, includes uh, um, uh, historical let's say sales orders for example and you are um, pulling address and putting on your report from here then you are screwed so apparently uh, the address is copied into the um, uh, sa sales order the data entity but in, in case if you are working uh, uh, with uh, this data entity for the uh, address, then uh, you should be um, pretty accurate. I mean, you should understand that. So, in UX++ code, you apparently have to uh, use two addresses. Uh, first one for the sales orders um, after um, March 1st, 2009, and this address for the um, historical address uh, historical orders which are earlier so you see this um, 
uh, Contoso database it's uh, like uh, just uh, filling up something here but apparently here you may have it like 2000 for example valid from wh whenever you created this customer so this is nuance which is uh, important if you are doing X++ development directly on the table level or if you are creating SSRS reports where you're creating a temporary table for the report so you need to uh, know this nuance. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Andrew Karasev. Uh